Well, I would say uh, people often ask me uh, what was about it that attracted me to Brother Malcolm. Uh, and I always tell them that the first time I heard him speak was the summer of 1962. I had just moved to Harlem and uh, moved in on a Friday. And that Saturday, my roommate and I decided that, that, we would, that we would go to walk down Lenox Avenue and see what's going on. Because I'm from Alabama, you know, he's from North Carolina, and we would, didn't quite know a whole lot about Harlem. We think we moved to Harlem on the duress. You know, because they got a cheap eight, eight rooms for $56 a month. So, <laughs> so for that kind of rent, man, we'll stay at Harlem. But uh, when I got down, Brother Malcolm was speaking. And the, that's when he was, was speaking in the in Yeah, the outside. Streets. He was speaking outside yeah. in the streets. Yeah. We, we, were, we saw the crowd gathering. So we said, well, what's going on? And they said, Malcolm X is going to speak. Now, at that time, I had vaguely heard of him, you know, the boogeyman type yeah. of uh, things. So I knew very much, very little about him. So I decided, my roommate and I decided, let's hear what he has to say. And he said something that day that has stayed with me forever. He was the first person I ever heard talk about as much about the attacks on our minds as he did about the physical attacks. I had never heard anyone talk about the attacks on the mind. The mind, the head. And, and growing up in Tuskegee, Alabama, where I did, you should go downtown to those movie theaters every Saturday as a child. And they were segregated, but unlike many places where you have you know, black people sitting in their balcony, we, they had two completely separate theaters, which I thought was much better. You had the white theater here and the black theater here. But we were going down every Saturday from about 10 a.m. until about 4 o'clock and see about three or four full list movies and all of that. And many times we saw movies dealing with Tarzan. And so for us, I would say from six years old to 13 years old, to me, Africa was, was Tarzan. And we used, to, we used to not want to be called African in any kind of way. And we thought the Africans were ignorant because when they spoke their languages among themselves, we thought they, 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 they just were in, ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. They were speaking <laughs> another the language. Movies, yeah. We thought they were just mumbling. <laughs> and we would laugh. We would laugh in the movie theater. And so when Brother Malcolm started talking about the attacks on the mind, I remembered those movies. And I remembered all, a lot of things that had happened. And, uh, and, and but as he talked for about three hours that day. By the time he finished, I was a Malcolmite. Oh and I have God. been one from that day from, from June 1962 until today, because I had never heard anyone talk about race in this country with the, with the consciousness, the accuracy, the, the, the historical context that he did. And especially when, he's, when he started talking about the attacks on the mind. Yeah. And that has always stayed with me. And today there is not a single person who calls, who's in the position of court of black leadership, no, whether they're progressive, conservative, Democrat, Republican, whatever they are, academic, they don't talk about the attacks on the mind. They just simply do yeah. not deal with we it. We always take the physical part, yeah. not what it goes Our inside. Our position is that we're involved in psychological warfare. And I, had, I was at a meeting today, from 10 o'clock this morning until 3 o'clock, and with a little group that I pulled together. And we are discussing ways to combat psychological warfare. And one of the ways was we would be showing your film. Because I think that's the greatest film I have ever seen dealing with the enslavement of African people. Thank you, my brother. Truly the greatest film. Thank you, thank you. And, I, and he has no books on Malcolm. He has no books on Malcolm. I have, 25, I have 25 books. I have, in fact, I have a Malcolm X collection. I have 25 cassette tapes of him speaking. I have DVDs of me doing lectures on him at colleges. I have photographs. I have about 25 books. I have newspaper clips. I have, a, I have two big plastic containers. Well, I'm going to invite you because I want you to see Shirikiana's new film. Okay. It's on Nkrumah, but okay. Malcolm is there. Right. right. Yeah, they so were, they, when, when Nkrumah came to Harlem, uh, in, they gave a reception to him, and Brother Malcolm was one of the ones who the, yeah, hosted that reception. Yeah, he's in the picture, yeah. He hosted that reception. Yeah. No, no, we got to talk, but yeah. give me your number, seriously, okay. because we don't want to waste time anymore. Yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. do a few things from our angle, yeah. and we see what happens. Okay. But I was so very in the grace for you to be. When I saw you there, I felt so good. When I, when I, when I, saw, I got the email yesterday. Really? And I said, Chester, man, because he's Chester. I was, when Chester, Chester Higgins Sr. called me one day and said, Peter, my son, Chester Jr., is coming to New York. And he has a book, 
and could you help him meet somebody at that? It just so happened that I knew Ord Coons, uh -huh. who was working at Double Day. I see. So when Chester came up, I took him over to meet Ord, and that's how that first book got published. I see, I see. That's how that first book well, got published. Well, what's so, so, what's so nice you were here? I'm Chester and I you, go way back. I when I'm on your email list, I get, I get your email. No, no, but leave me your number because okay. I want to personally talk okay. to you. Okay, okay. Simma. Well, that's certainly bona fide. Yeah. So, so, I mean, what... What would, how would, what would Malcolm say now about what's going on in the world among black folks? I mean, well, you know, I kind of deal with that to, to a degree because I have, I have written a play called Malcolm Martin Medgar, and which the three of them are in the hereafter. I call it the hereafter, and they are looking down and commenting on things that have happened since their assassination. I think he would be. I think he would be. One of the questions I raised in that play. Is it, have we as a people proven worthy of the sacrifices made by those three brothers? And my answer is no. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, and, we, and they be commenting on current day events in the play. They, it's called Malcolm Martin Medgar, and they, mm. they, they comment on, they're looking down from the hereafter, and they're commenting on things. That, that's that, interesting. That it's back, it's that's come back around, because I'm Not Your Negro, nominated for an Oscar, yeah. is about those three people as well. So. Yeah. All right, thank you for your time. You should also oh, cool. your master teacher. Oh yeah, I wrote a, a memoir about the whole experience of working with Brother Malcolm Cole, uh, witnessing Brother Malcolm X, the master teacher. Because I consider him, to me, the, the most important member of any community is the master teacher. And he was the master teacher, that's what I consider him. Off to go. Uh, and, and I was trying to find a way, as I began to lecture him in colleges, to relate to students. And I remember when I was working at the Black Theater Alliance, and I would see uh, people who were like, master dancers like Judith Jamison and people who we considered, you know, absolutely at the top of the field. But when Catherine Dunham came to town, they would all rush to take her, what they call master dance classes. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, you know, it's too bad that in other areas we don't have yeah. the same kind of attitude. Now it's expanded. Now yeah. master classes expanded. Yeah. But let me ask you one thing. I saw when you guys gathered, Malcolm folks gathered in one video, uh -huh. and there was a guy who works for the FBI part they're talking to you with, you know, with you guys. Was, was it right? I mean, to me, I felt... When was this? Is it... it was a gathering of Malcolm X, uh, the, the people who were in his organization. At, the, uh, at your age now, yeah, uh -huh. was a, it was a recent, recent documentary. And, it's, it's, and I saw the FBI agent guy who got him really... He was there with you guys. No, well, he wasn't with me. <laughs> Because <laughs> <laughs> we did, in 19, in 19, in 2006, we had a reunion. Uh -huh. We had a reunion. No FBI agent was there. He no. was talking loud. The loudest of all. What, what, who, what was his, do you know uh, what, what was the, his name? The light-skinned short guy. The short guy. Oh, I know you you're talking about, uh, with his, his, his Muslim name was James 67. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's always been kind of a, you know, uh, yeah, that's always been a kind of okay. I, I don't want to be <laughs>